Hi guys, so we're back. Um, in the last video, I hope I didn't scare you away. Things got pretty complicated and complex with these formulas, but what we pretty much did is we calculated an average value for all these metrics, stress, sleep quality, RPE, all these other things, for this person on this date that we select. We also computed average values for for this person over the entire year when the comparison is self, or if we change that to team, it would compare it to the team average on this date, or if we can change it to position, we're comparing his value to the position average on this date. Now, one thing that I like to do, I didn't want to do this in the first video, but I like having the option to aggregate information by a specified number of days that may not be the entire year or one date specifically. For example, what if we wanted to compare Stewie Griffin, his value to his average value over the past seven days? Well, currently we don't have a way to do that, but we can fix that. It's gonna get a little bit more complicated, but we can fix that. We're gonna create another filter called past X days. I did this in the ultimate team dashboard or team performance dashboard video series, but we're going to do it again here. Now, what I want to happen is if I type in a number here, I want these numbers on the bottom to aggregate to be the past number of days that are within this range. So pretty much 10-28. I might as well do this because so between these two dates, is what I would want to happen if I type the number seven in there and or the average value. So we're going to make that happen. And the way that we're going to do that is we need to add some some other criteria. For each of the for each of these things, we pretty much need to double each of these each of these uh, parts, each of these if formulae and and add some things to them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. Oops, I'm going to copy this. Alt tab or Alt enter, sorry, and paste it beneath. What this says is if this is equal to reference A2, which is self, then we want the average stress for this name and when stress is not equal to blank. Fine. But now that we have another filter, we're going to say if and if and this comparison is equal to self and this cell equals blank, close off the and with a parenthesis. So if those two things are true, this is blank and this is self, then we want the average stress for this person um, over the entire year. But if that's not true, say if and I2 or this equals self and I3 does not equal blank, then we want the average stress value for this person not for the entire year anymore, but we're gonna add in two pieces of date criteria, okay? And we're gonna do that here after B1. Let's say table daily, date to date, which is a colon, date, and then add two square brackets on both sides so that when I drag this across, it won't move. The first piece of criteria is I'm going to say when the date is less than or equal to and sign, and the less than or equal to are in quotes, this date. Now what I would get is I would get if the, this cell is not equal to blank and this is equal to self, then I would get the average value for this person for their stress from this date backwards. So the average value of all the values from this date backwards, not including any values past this date. But that's not all, because I want to get this range. I don't want to go back forever. 
from this date. So the second thing that I'm going to say is I'm going to go table daily. I'm going to do two square brackets, date, colon, date, comma, is greater than or equal to, and sign, whatever this is, I, I click the up arrow, I click on position, but I can't, I can't reach the date. So I clicked on position, I went up, and you'll see it change from I2 to I1. I'm on the date cell. If it's greater than this date, minus whatever is in this box, whatever number's in this box. So now what I told it is, I want the average stress value for this person's name when the date in the in the data sheet is less than or equal to this date and it's greater than or equal to this date minus whatever numbers are in here. So essentially, if I type the number seven in here, that second part of the date is gonna be 1021 and the first part is gonna be this. So we're gonna get the average value for the stress between 1028 and 1021. So I did that for the self. Now, probably the quickest way to do, uh, let's just do it for, let's just do the same thing for, for all of them. And the probably the quickest way to do this, I'm trying to think about it now, is let's just, let's just keep on going, let's just keep on rolling. I'm gonna do it pretty quickly. But I'm going to do the same thing over again. So and comma. So a three now. So if it's a position, or if it's um, team, might as well just copy this. And i three equals blank. And we want what we wanted originally. That's fine. Alt enter down. I'm going to copy what I have up here. But now I'm going to change this date to be what it was before or what it was on the on the top one. What I'm going to do is next to B1 name is B1, I'm going to copy this part of the formula. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to replace this with it. Remove the extra comma. Okay, so now we said for the second part, if Reference if I2, which is right here, is equal to team and this is equal to blank, then we want the average stress value for this date for everybody. So that's the team average um, for the year. But if that's not true, so if and reference if this equals team and this is not blank. Then we want to get the average stress for the entire team when the date is less than that date and greater than that date minus whatever days we have. So essentially in that date range. And now we're just going to do the same thing with position groups. So and comma I3 equals blank. If those two things are true, then we just want to do what we were doing before. And excuse me, I'm going to remove this stuff at the end. Do a comma, Alt, Enter. I'm going to copy this, paste it beneath, and say not equal to. And I'm going to copy this. This is the date criteria that we had. And I'm going to replace it with this. Okay, I hope everyone can see that okay. And I'm going to do a blank at the end, close the last parenthesis, and just keep on doing parentheses here 
until a black one shows up like that. So what I want to do is I just want to scroll through this slowly so that you can take screenshots or whatever you need. Or maybe I can just open it up um, so you can take a screenshot of it or something if you need it. I don't know if it's going to work, but might as well try it. So click enter. Now, theoretically, if I type in the number three here, this will give me the position average stress value for the past three days. And this is Stewie Griffin's value for this date. So I'm going to type in three. The value changed. If I change this to self, this might be Stewie Griffin's um, average stress value over the past three days. Do that. F7, because it's the same. And we can easily just calculate this pretty quickly. Let's try five. Okay, uh, the previous five days. So we're looking at the dates 1028 to 1023 for him, and his average stress value is five. I'm going to go in here. This is good too. We'll just do some filtering stuff. I'm going to uncheck Donald Duck because I don't want to be filtered on him. I want to see Stewie Griffin. And we're looking for 1023 through, oops, through 1028. I'm going to copy all those values. I'm into the database here. I'm just going to paste them here. And I'm going to do equals average and select these values. Hit enter. And the average value is five over those past five days, just to confirm that the calculation is working correctly. I'm going to remove this. And now hopefully, hopefully I did this okay where I can just drag this over and it'll apply to everything. It looks the the numbers look aligned. So I'm just gonna check by clicking on the last one, the readiness score one, and make sure that everything says readiness score instead of stress or sleep quality. Readiness score, readiness score. It looks good. And there we have it. So now we have an even more dynamic dashboard where if we change this to to three days or seven days or no days, we have different values showing up depending on how we want to compare things. And in the next video, uh, we'll start adding some more things. But now we've just added a whole nother layer of potential complexity. We can make it as complex or not complex as we want, depending on how we manipulate things, um, which makes this a really powerful p way to look through information. So thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you in the next video.